Uh, so we're solving more trig equations. Uh, this is the second in a series of three videos called the Tricky Three. Uh, so the Tricky Sequel, uh, you'll remember our last video was Square or Die, where we looked at um, solving trig equations where there was a squared uh, trig ratio. Uh, this time we'll be looking at the terribly titled trick to domain domination. Uh, let's take a look at a question so we can see what the uh, what the big deal is with this question here. Uh, so here's our example, cos 2 theta equals 1 half. Uh, and this time I've remembered to put our domain name, zero, uh, theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Now the big difference here, the thing that sets this apart from any other question is this number 2 here. Uh, so it's not just cos of theta, which is what all of our other questions have been. It's cos of 2 theta. Uh, now, other domain domination style questions would be things like cos 3 theta. Uh, it doesn't always have to be 3 theta. It could, it could just, sorry, theta. It could be cos 3x. Uh, other ones could be cos 7 theta or cos 7x. Um, you could also end up with something like cos, and this one's one that people don't spot, cos theta on 2, which of course is the same as cos uh, half theta. Uh, all of these questions come under the genre of our domain domination style questions. Uh, now, they're actually not that difficult at all, uh, but it is a little bit difficult to wrap your head around, so let's take a look. Now the trick to this is that we need to solve this for theta, uh, but we're used to solving all of that. Uh, and we need to solve theta uh, in a particular domain. We need to solve theta in between zero and two pi. So first what we're gonna do is solve it for two theta. But when we do that, um, we actually need to change the domain, hence the catchy title, domain domination. The reason we need to change the domain is because we're going to double the domain here because we're using the number two. If it was this one, we'd triple the domain. If it was this one, we'd multiply the domain by seven. If it was this one, we'd halve the domain. Uh, we're gonna double the domain and then later on, we're gonna divide everything by two. So we're gonna multiply by two and then later on in the equation, we'll divide by two. Uh, I'm not going to try to talk you through it before we get a finish. We'll have a look at it at the end and see, see if it makes more sense. So, first step. Now we're going to rewrite this. Uh, so, cos 2 theta is equal to a half between the domain 0 is less than 2 theta, which is less than 4 pi. So now you can see that I've changed my domain, not from just theta is between zero and two pi, but two theta is between zero and four pi. Uh, and, and later on, we'll find, we'll, we'll answer it for this. Okay, uh, now from here, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward, I guess. Now, if you wanna make it easier on your brain, I guess, you can say let two theta equal x, or u, you're probably used to using that. Uh, we'll use x. So cos x equals one half. Now you'll grab your, your table from somewhere, wherever it's gone to. Whoops, where'd that come from? Grab your table, there it is. You'll look at your table and you'll say cos x equals a half. Okay, pi on three, great. I know what I'm doing. Let's get rid of our table. So uh, our reference angle, is pi on three. Now it's a positive, so C A S T, it's gonna exist in those two quadrants. So unit circle. It's gonna exist here as pi on three. C A S T. And it's gonna exist here as pi on three. Okay, now remember we're looking for angles between 0 and 4 pi. So, x is equal to pi on 3, or all the way around, or 5 pi on 3. And then we need to go all the way around a second time. So, pi on 3, 
5 pi and 3, 7 pi and 3, or 11 pi and 3. So x is equal to all of those things. Don't forget that x is equal to 2 theta. So 2 theta is equal to all of that. Now if 2 theta is equal to all of that, then that means, therefore, theta must be equal to each of those values divided by 2. So pi on 3 divided by 2 is going to be pi on 6. 5 pi on 6, or 7 pi on 6, or 11 pi on 6. Now, it's a bit of a surprise here. Usually when we're doing 0 to 2 pi, we only get two answers in two quadrants. Um, so two, two answers, uh, one, in two of, one in each of the quadrants, you know what I mean. Uh, now, with this 2 theta here, you're going to end up with more than that. You're going to increase the quadrants and then you're going to do that divide by thing or at the end. Now, if there was 3, you'd end up with 6. If there was 7, you'd end up with um, 14, something like that. And if it was half, you'd end up with 1 instead of uh, 2. Uh, best thing that you can do with these questions is try them out uh, and see how you go with them. And make sure you talk to me when you're having trouble. Uh, that's two of our uh, tricky three knocked over. In the third video, we'll take a look at the last one, uh, which is probably, I think, the most difficult.